Hello dear students today we are going to discuss about machine tool gearbox it is the part of mechanical system design myself mr pardeshi assistant professor in mechanical engineering department kekwag college of engineering so first of all we will see what are the different classification of machine tool and its drives uh, the rotary motion it is classified into two parts that is step drive and step less drive so in the step drive there are various types that is belt gears and in the step less drive that is mechanical drive hydraulic drive and electrical drives so we are mainly focusing on the gearing drives or gear drives so the lathe machine is one of the example where the machine tool gearbox is being used so we will just see in the lathe machine which type of different gears are being used you can see easily in the gear in the lathe machine there are uh, different shafts are there and the uh, various gears are mounting and by using this we can have the different speed at the spindle or at the chair so by means of various per gear and by, by means of the gearing arrangement we will have the different steps of the speed and depending on that we can have the different speed and the its output so the purpose of gearbox if you talk about in that case to increase the torque might be the torque is to be increased or decreased by means of a gearbox then to convert the standard speed of the prime mover to the specific speed of the driven machine that is also one of the purpose of the gearbox then to convert a single out input speed to a multiple output speed that is being also one of the purpose of the gearbox then to facilitate the specific relative position of a machine shaft of a prime mover and to the uh, relative position of the another uh, facilitate the machine which is going to provide by means of a gearbox then is it is used to increase or decrease the speed as you know well known purpose of the gearbox in case of vehicle that is in four wheeler or two wheeler so by means of gearbox we can easily reduce or increase the speed then various consideration in the design of multi speed gearbox so we will just focus uh, few of them Uh, if you talk about the first consideration while designing of multi speed gearbox that is the optimum number of speed steps with increments between the 10 and 15% so while in case of designing a multi speed gearbox in that case we taken to consideration that only 10 to 15% of increment in the speed steps must be there and it should be optimum in between the 10 to 15% then speed range without stopping electric motor so we know we all know that the electric motor frequent starting and stopping it is undesirable so we cannot stop this because we are using the gearbox multi speed gearbox so it is also taken to consideration that without stopping an electric motor that speed has to be changed accordingly or according to our application then one set of gear in engagement at a one time so only one gear is engaged at a one time to reduce the frictional losses and to reduce the various losses occurring at the time of transmission of power from one shaft to another shaft then use of minimum parts is in the multi speed gearbox it is also one of the taken to consideration while designing of a multi speed gearbox then ergonomic consideration in a uh, gearbox design that is a centralized control is also very much important we need to take into consideration that the gearbox has to be centralized control while we are talking about the ergonomical design then entire unit within a machine in case of machine tool gearbox the very less space is provided for the machine tool gearbox so in that case we need to take and care about that then why multi speed gearbox are required on a spindle shaft so different feed rate we want at the time of uh, finishing of the workpiece 
in that in that case uh, the multi speeds are required then different material on which that work piece has to be uh, finished by means of a machine tool or the tool we are providing to that if you talk about the lathe machine in that case the different material has to be produced by using the various tools are there so different material of a work piece is also one of the requirement then different diameter of shaft which is going to turn on that particular machine that is also taken into consideration then different types of cutting tools material so if you talk about the cutting tool material if it is very hard then also it is uh, having the various properties so that properties will affect on the work piece finished uh, finishing properties so as you know the speed of a shaft that is inversely proportional to the diameter of the shaft which is going to turn on that machine so from this it is reciprocal of speed uh, diameter and then if you talk about the pitch line velocity that is v that is pi dn upon 1000 so here the only gen general structure is provided here is motor is there here is the uh, in the orange color uh, multi speed gear box is there and the feed that is provided to the work piece that is clamped in a chuck so here i am talking about cut, cutting speed velocity that is v that is in this direction and this is the d of the work piece that is capital d so if you talk about relationship between the shaft diameter and cutting speed that is v that v is equals to pi d n upon 1000 so from this equation we can say that that diameter is directly proportional to the cutting speed our cutting speed is directly proportional to the diameter of work piece which is going, which is going to turn on particular machine tool then as i told you the different diameter and it is the reciprocal of that n or as diameter increases speed decreases so it is the relationship between that then if you talk about terminology in uh, multi speed gearbox design that is z z is indicating by number of speed steps that is uh, indicated by z then capital n is nothing but number of stages for example in the picture that is in that case the z is 1 and n is 1 so here stages are only 1 and z is also 1 so then the another example the z is equals to 4 so four different speed gear box or the different speed we got from the neighbor die neighbor picture so here there are four speed steps we will got so if you see the diagram very carefully at input shaft there are four gears are available and at the output shaft again there are four gears are available so number of speed steps are four then the other example now z is equals to 6 so in that case you will find the six gear is available on the output shaft and six gear is available on the input shaft instead of previous diagram the difference is that the two gear cluster is using at the input shaft and the individual gear is using at the output shaft so electric motor is the input and the spindle which is as i talk talk about in the case of uh, lathe machine so you will have the spindle in that case then the z is equals to 6 in the next diagram and n is equals to 2 so when z is equals to 6 and n is equals to 2 in that case there are two stages in first case only one stage is there in only two shafts are available in the another di diagram you will find the three shafts are there so again another layout of the previous diagram is that in that case now p is equals to 3 or 2 so what is mean by that p p is the number of speed steps available at the one stage or first stage and number of speed steps available at the second stage so if you talk about first stage here if you see the two gear cluster is here so that is that's why here is p value is 2 and in the second stage the three gear cluster is available so that's why the value of p is 3 so it is not mandatory here is 
two gear cluster is there and here is three gear cluster is there you can use the three gear cluster at input shaft and two gear cluster as at the output shaft also so it is same so here only the three gear cluster and two gear cluster is very much important it is depending on the value of p so here as i told you z is equals to six n is or number of stages is two here p1 as i told you number of speed steps in a first stage that is two here as i told you the two gear cluster is using here in the first stage and p2 is number of speed steps in the second stage that is three here the three gear cluster is using at the output shaft then as z z is nothing but a number of speed step that is six so that z has to be split up in terms of two or three so here you can split that z in terms of two or three here two into three that is z so here p1 is two p2 is three so z is splitting it into terms of two or three try to remember so this is called z and z has to be split in terms of two and three so here so as the z is splitting it into terms of two and three so depending on that the value of p1 and p2 we get so p1 is nothing but the number of speed steps in the first stage that is two and p2 nothing but number of speed steps in the second stage that is three so p1 is two and p2 is three so very simple so again here the z is equals to nine and n is equals to two again why n is equals to two there are three shafts are available input shaft intermediate shaft and the output shaft and z is equals to nine now the z is equals to nine now z is split up into two or three how it is to be now it has to be z is equals to p1 into p2 now three into three is nine so p1 value is three p2 value is three so here in the yellow portion you'll got the three gear cluster is there why the p1 value is three so three gears cluster is there and in the pink uh, gear you'll find the another value that is p2 that is three again three gear cluster is using so p1 is three p2 is three so very simple dear students again the layout of this particular gearbox which will be drawn by using this particular diagram that is the layout of the when the z is equals to 9 then z is equals to 12 and n is equals to 3 here in this diagram the n is equals to 3 now the number of stages are 3 why it is 3 input shaft output shaft and there are two number of intermediate shafts so that's why the speed steps or the stages are three and the number of speed steps are 12s so 12 different spindle speeds we got from this particular diagram so if you talk about the z as i told you z is going to split into two or three so that is going to split is 2 into 3 into 2 here here so 2 3 is a 6 3 uh, and 6 2 is a 12 or you can write 3 into 2 into 2 or 2 into 2 into 3 that is also same so depending on that p1 p2 and p3 values occurring so here value of p1 is 2 value of p2 is 3 and value of p3 p3 is 2 so depending on that z which is going to split in terms of 2 and 3 and how the layout is going to draw which will be discussed in later lecture so here the spindle speeds are there so from n1 to n9 or from n1 to nz that is the final speed or we can say n minimum and n maximum so here the n minimum is nothing but n1 and n maximum is the last step that is nz so here the extreme spindle speed that is n minimum and the output speed or the input speed that is n minimum or n input and uh, and output that is the output speed we got from this particular shaft that is indicated by blue arrow then next is the law of the step regulation that are we'll discuss in the next lecture so thank you very much for watching my video thank you all